Hey, it's Marianne. Welcome to another episode of the Influential Nonprofit. Uh, as you probably know, I am your host and I work with nonprofit leaders to master the art of influence so they can ask for and receive what they want, need, and deserve and build thriving communities of support. And part of mastering the art of influence is uh, being of value to others. When I'm of value to you, you'll be of value to me. And that's how we invite people into our organization. And so I'm here with Chris Barlow of Beeline Marketing, and we're going to talk about attracting new donors to your organization, like people who don't know you, who who have never heard of you through like some digital marketing, Facebook, um, Google, all those things. So welcome, Chris, because I think this is a big opportunity that people are not taking advantage of. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Marianne. It's good to be here and I'm excited to talk to you about this. All right. So you are founder and customer happiness director. See, I'm founder and chief excitement officer. So <laughs> nice. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. Right. And you were thankful to get help to get to help nonprofits go their mission. Me too. And, and donor based through digital marketing, specifically Google grants, Bing and Facebook ads. Awesome. And you're also thankful to be a dad to seven kids, which I find exceptionally um uh, incredible. And cause I have three and it's a lot and to help them learn to live generously. So helping your kids learn to live generously. Now you started this company, right? And right, you're the founder and I was looking on your website and I want to ask you about that before we get into the digital stuff. And before we even do that, I always start with the same question, which is tell me something you are proud of that you don't get to brag about a lot. Oh, um, Hmm. I guess uh, I'm I'm very okay for for myself. Um, I'm proud of the uh, amount of, of progress I made. I, I haven't done it in a while, but I'm for progress I've made learning piano. Um, oh. grew up grew up playing piano, but then kind of took a break for a while. I was I was in band and in in high school and junior high and stuff, but then picked it up again in college, and I got pretty far. You know in the last several years but then I, I kind of taken a break so now I play it some for fun but but then um I'm also proud of my kids be just because of how they've learned to interact with um adults and peers and they just are really strong people and I feel like they are not afraid of of correcting me when I need it and um and they're really good at like setting their mind to something and, and learning it like my son picked up the Rubik's Cube in October and he's just like a whiz at it now and wants to go to competitions and it's just been a few months and so yeah they just they tend to to work oh. really hard so I'm, I'm proud of them awesome okay um and I have now ever been able to do a Rubik's Cube so yay for your son <laughs> for accomplishing more than I have in a lifetime that is not how my brain functions okay so and then you started this you founded this company um um and I, I was reading your story and I would just love for you to share a little bit about, you know, um, why you wanted to do this and how you, you know, what, what's your philosophy for working with nonprofits? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I, I started, I, I knew growing up that I wanted to do something meaningful. I was never really interested. Like I just wasn't driven by like, and maybe a lot of kids aren't, but like, making a lot of money or, or, or having a successful career. Um, but then I wasn't really interested in, in doing like being like working in it. I wasn't thinking along these lines, like working in a nonprofit myself, um, humanitarian aid or ministry or whatever that just didn't speak to me. And I think part of that was shaped by like seeing my dad who is more shaped that way, working in corporate America and getting burned out. And so I was like, Oh, I just don't want to do that. But then I, I got a job, right after college in sales, doing cold calling. <laughs> and I just had to get a job. And I actually really liked it. And I really enjoyed the business end of, uh, you know, being in a business, being like, I really, really liked the job and I had a good manager. And I think that helped to me. And it was a, a company, what we were doing was good. So, and and after doing that for a number of years, you know, I kind of said, well, I'm not going to stay in this long term. Like I, I was there, I was at the company a long time, but I wasn't, I didn't see myself retiring in it or staying in the industry. And so I, I had always wanted to start a business and I ended up kind of through various things, starting a, this business, doing marketing. And I wasn't sure what it, kind of what industry or how I wanted to focus. 
but fairly early on, I, I knew a uh, nonprofit that I, I had some personal connections with and I, I or knew someone who worked there. And I was like, hey, can I just help you guys with your Google ad uh, account? You have a Google grant. Can I just run that for you? Get some experience under my belt and volunteer. And they're like, yeah, that'd be great. So I did that for a while. Got some random clients here and there that were in the for-profit space just uh, early on. And then um, like within about nine months to a year, um, that nonprofit started referring me to others that they knew. And they're like, you know, what, Chris, we have a budget for this. We'd like to, to pay you to do this and, and, and kind of expand what you're doing. And so that just kind of slowly got momentum. And I kind of felt like I came back to where I had uh, kind of dreamed of being as, as a, as a young person and as a teenager, um, as a child, just doing something more meaningful and impactful. And so that's kind of how I found myself back in the nonprofit space. And I just love, I've always been someone who's, um, I, I, I use the word evangelist, like t telling people about something good that I know of, like, Hey, you know, I, I love sitting at a booth and saying, Hey, you should come check out this, whatever it is. Uh, say, like I said, I did cold calling, right? Yeah. So helping nonprofits get their message out there help to, to attract new donors or, or further their, their mission. It just kind of fits my personality and it fits the the kind of vision I had. So, yeah. Like, okay. I have such a similar story, but I like, because of this, like everything you said resonated, you know, my dad, I mean, I live in St. Louis. My dad worked for Anheuser-Busch. He gave so much of his energy to that. He loved that company. And then it wound up, you know, kind of turning on him in the end. He wrote a book about it. I mean, it's, it's wow. you know, but, and I watched him, I watched him come home every day crying at what was happening, you know, just so disappointed. And there was, there was scandal and kickbacks and all this stuff. And my dad want any part of it anyway. And just, I said, that's never going to, you know, I'm, I, I'm never going to do that. And, and then I went to college and I was an advertising major and all my friends were getting jobs in ad agencies. And I just, I just really didn't care if you bought Budweiser or Miller, you know, and it was, <laughs> yeah. and so like, you know, we just sort of, there was no, this was like the nineties. There was no nonprofit school. I didn't even know what, I didn't know what any of this was and, you know, kind of slowly move, move my way into the industry. And, you know, it's the same thing. I like, I, I really didn't get a lot of, I knew I didn't want that big corporate thing. I didn't want the ladder, you know, and so we just sort of kind of figured out another path. <laughs> mm. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, and also like the pain of watching, you know, like just watching your parents give, give so much to something and to just, I said, I'm never going to be that person. All right. Now, mm. and it's beeline. So there's bees and I always talk about butterflies, but I think it's the nice. same thing. And it's this idea of attraction, right? You're creating something that like that, that, um, that we, that, that, you know, you're growing something that, that, donors or aka bees would be attracted to right yeah yeah and it's not just attraction it's nourishing it's mm -hmm. the flower provides nourishment for the bee and and so it's not just about like making ourselves look nicer um there's nothing wrong with that because that part of that is just that better communicating who you are and what you do and why why you exist um but and, and the right bees, you know, certain bees go to certain flowers, right? So part of that is just, and it's also like saying, are we really nourishing people? And of course, that's kind of a natural, hopefully a natural thing for your mission, but you want to be someone who nourishes the bees too. And that's, you know, in this analogy, your donors. Right. And, right. And, and understand, you know, that um, it's sort of a symbiotic relationship, right? Yes. We're taking care of each yes. other. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to talk about is, you know, attracting new donors and everybody wants new donors. I just did a two day thing about this and everybody wants new donors. And yet we really have, I would say, I'm, I want to be judicious as I say this, like people don't really understand tactically how to do that. Right. It's like, sort of like, oh yeah, we need new donors. Okay. So how are we going to do that? And especially in the digital space. And I do feel like this is a really underutilized tactic that nonprofits um, can use. And also 
Um, because it's not always about like budget. You know what I mean? This what we're gonna talk about is not like, not like a big budget thing, right? It's just basically understanding the formats and and understanding like what to do. So I so let's just explain um how how we attract new donors in the digital space. Well, um, if you are trying to reach people who don't know you, haven't heard of you, um, it, it, it can't be like um field of dreams where we build the baseball field and they just they come to us the people if you build it they won't come because one you're competing for all the attention and people just aren't thinking about you so how can we build a bridge to people and there's a lot of ways you can go about doing this but a very effective way is to think about well what do our potential donors what do they need or what questions are they asking or how can we help them and serve them in a small way? Like we're not here to create a whole nother program to serve people who are outside of our main constituency for our programs and, and mission. But how can we provide something of value to people who would potentially support our work and believe in the work we're doing? And the practical way that you can do that in, a, in the digital marketing world is by creating what they call in the for-profit space, a lead magnet. And essentially what that is, is putting together a piece of content that is valuable, um, that is helpful. And it provides an answer to questions that your potential donors have, or it helps them solve a problem, or it entertains them in some way. So it it, sol it, it entertains, it solves a problem. And the first one is that- Answers questions. Answers questions. Um, and I, I think this is a challenging concept for organizations just to understand how they can be of value to others. Um, mm -hmm. It's because when I work with organizations on this, it, it it there's a little bit of a disconnect because we're so focused on, hey, look at all this awesome work we do. That's what should draw people to this, but it's actually the expertise that your organization naturally has as a byproduct of its programs, that can be very enticing. So let's give me some examples of, I think it would really help people to understand this concept to have a few examples. Yeah, absolutely. So um, if you are a, uh, I've talked about this one a lot, if you're an animal sanctuary, you know, the, the beneficiaries of your programs are animals, but you have so much expertise on how to care for animals and even po possibly train them that you can provide to pet owners. Every pet owner who has a good relationship with their pets, cats, dogs, whatever, is going to understand the value of what you do. And every pet owner knows they can't take in 10 cats or 10 dogs or five dogs. Um, and so, so that's not what they're going to be about. But if they, if you can help them like answer questions about becoming a, being a pet owner or, or problems that they run into or how to train or how to, you know, do a, a difficult thing like um, clip your cat's you know, claws, like whatever it might be, you have resources and a knowledge that you can share with people and put that out there for free and say, here's, here's what we've learned from our expertise. Um, or like, are you, uh, you know, some people like, this might not be the best example, but like, maybe you put out a little quiz that says, you know, would it be better for your family to have a cat or a dog? Like maybe people will just choose based on what they are yeah. want or interested in. Maybe they can figure that out for themselves. But there are quest quizzes like that where you can help them think through something and provide a semi-customized answer. So that's that's one sector. I mean, I, I could give other examples too, if you like. Well, yeah, I, I do want to give a few more because again, I think this is the biggest thing is just really understanding how, how a mere value um, because we're not used to marketing our value in that way. Like, oh, that's programmatic, you know? Um, but so for instance, like if you work with seniors, you know, um, how to, how to know your, I mean, cause I'm a certain age, you know, we all go through how to know when your mom or dad is ready for assisted living or, you know, mm. or, um, you know, one of my clients, foster adoptive care coalition, you know, they're expert in, in, in kid and, you know, in child development, um, mm -hmm. you know, how to make homework and not a battle or how to help kids through a crisis or something, because that's what they do. They help kids through crisis. Um, so that I could, I would say like, oh, that's really interesting. Um, my, I work with the sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet and we're working on one. Well, well, we have two ideas. So one of them's more complicated than the other, but one of them is just a spiritual, like a, a spiritual, um, 
like guide, like um, mm -hmm. so that they could, people could download and here's all the different things the sisters are working on and some, you know, uh, prayers or intentions that you could say towards that. But the other one is kind of like the quiz of like the sister archetype, like what sister are you? And then you take the quiz and you're- Oh, wow. <laughs> But we're, we're still like that, that, you know, but those kinds of things are, yep. that's a little bit involved, but really this is just like a PDF of stuff that you probably are. Like I work with child care aware of Missouri that, you know, they have, they have tons and tons of resources. Just pick one. You know what I'm saying? Like how to find a, a child, the best child care center for your kid. People are going to download that because those are the questions that they're asking. Like, how do I welcome a new pet into my family? You know, all of those things. So you are an expert at something. Mm -hmm. I guarantee that you are, that people are either, or like I said, like this, the, the sister's archetype that could inform them, you know, or entertain them, ask, mm -hmm. answer a question they have. Like, if you work with unhoused people, what to do when somebody asks you for money? You know, yeah. that's, that would be because people encounter that all the time. And, and mm -hmm. now, so now you have this piece of content. So what, hopefully people are, their minds are kind of going, they're understanding what kind of content they could share. Then what, do, now what do we do with it? Well, I, I um, let me make a, a point about even like, how do you go about creating this? Um, t two things. Um, want you, before you do the effort of creating something, you want to make sure it's something that people want. So okay. I recommend coming up with a number of ideas that you could put together, you know, as you mentioned with that particular client, like a quiz and a, and, and a guide. Um, and, and sometimes it's good. It's a great idea to, to ultimately create more than one thing, but like, you're like, what are we going to put our effort into first? What's going to make the most sense? I recommend first doing some searches on Google, YouTube, and even social media and see what kind of results you're getting. How many results are there? If there's a lot of results, if there's a lot of similar content, that's actually a good sign. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Um, it's actually a sign that there's a lot of supply and therefore probably the demand is 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 high enough to to warrant you creating something else because so a lot of people are searching saying, for oh, it. Oh, somebody did that already. I don't want to do that. Oh, no. somebody did that already. Oh, that's a good thing. People are looking for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are billions of searches out there. You don't need them all. You just need a few. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's so supply and demand. Another thing you, you can do, Google has a free tool called the Google Keyword Planner. You can just Google that, look how to find there. It's You just need a free account with a, an, a Google ad account. Uh, if you already have the Google grant, it's in there. It's free. You don't need to add, input credit card information. Uh, the Google Keyword Planner, you can search and get the search volume for any keywords or, or phrases that you think of. And so you can see say, well, are people searching for the phrase Ethiopian coffee or or Ethiopian Proverbs. I mentioned that because I'm working with an organization right now and they do a lot of uh, aid work, um, education work uh, in Ethiopia. And so we're putting together uh, some resources. One of the things we're going to do is a, a, a guide on Ethiopian Proverbs. And so before we do that, though, we made sure, oh, are there a lot of people searching for for African Proverbs, Ethiopian Proverbs, uh, with, you know, wise sayings? In general, it's like, oh yeah, there's a lot of searches happening for that. It's worth creating that because people are going to be looking for it. So you do that kind of qualitative research. Another thing you can do is survey your current donors and say, well, we're thinking about creating one of these three resources. Which one would be most helpful to you? And get your feedback from your current donors to help mm. you decide what would make sense for prospective or uh, potential donors. And, and when you get those two pieces of data, the qualitative, quantitative information put together, then now you have that validation that you need before you put in the effort to create something. Okay. Um, and then one other thing I'll say about creation. Don't feel like you have to invent this from scratch. One, you might already have stuff because you're, you, you're this is your subject matter expertise for your programs. See if you can repurpose stuff you already have. Or 100%. I love that idea. Yeah. yeah. Or find a company who has similar values and expertise as you. And find some of their marketing content, whether it's a blog or email or whatever, and ask if you can borrow it or if they will, quote unquote, donate it to you for your resource. And, and then you can give them full credit. The expertise can come from the company. And now you've built an inroad relationship with someone in the marketing team of a company who could potentially be a sponsor for you. Wow, I love this idea. Okay. 
because wow, that's a win, win, win. That's a woo. I love this. Okay. So let's say I'm going to go back to the senior, like you, you work with seniors mm -hmm. in some way, like an older population. And then so you're going to go to like maybe a, a for-profit company that serves seniors mm -hmm. like medically or residentially or whatever and say, Hey, you have this content. Could we share your content with our audience, giving you full credit? And then they're, of course they're going to be like, Oh yeah, because that, and, and you're building a relationship and you're, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah, I so had never thought we, of that. We did this with a, uh, a, a Jewish food bank. Um, we created a recipe book for all the Jewish holidays, but instead of like just sourcing the recipes from wherever, from their audience or from their employees or, or family, we went to Jewish celebrity chefs um, and reached out to them and said, Hey, we're, this is what we're creating. And these, we really like these couple recipes from your site. Would you donate them to this recipe book that we're creating? And we'll, we're creating, putting together as a PDF. We're giving away for free. We're not trying to resell it. We'll create a, a, a profile page in the book at the end with all about you, with a link to your Instagram and to your own direct actual recipe book that people want to buy, they can. So you're getting full credit and you're contributing something that's already on your website. And they were all like, yeah, sure, go for sure, it. Sure, yes. Like it doesn't cost them anything. Time, right. Like it's all there. It, it only benefits. I love that idea of, a, uh, you know, the, of the food pantry doing a cookbook. Like, again, that's something that's a value to people. Um, and especially specific to like Jewish cooking, Jewish holidays. Okay. That now we're really diving down into our, our audience, right. Attracting mm -hmm. that, that audience. Ooh, that was good. Um, all right. And now people are thinking, oh my God, I have to make a cookbook. No, you do not. Okay. No. no. <laughs> a lot of it is, I really believe most of the content, of most of this is, is stuff people already have. Um, and, you know, they have just so much content that they don't even realize that they have. Uh, or, you know, partnering with somebody to share content. Like, like um, I just thought of this, one of my clients, um, you know, during COVID when everything shut down and she ran... Um, a science program here in, in, in St. Louis, but she curated a list of the best science when everybody was doing like virtual school and stuff. She was curating a list of the best like science articles or, you know, or science um, um, activities for kids, Yeah, you know? And so she, all she was doing was taking all like, like it wasn't her content. It wasn't another mm -hmm. company's content. She just took all of this and sort of curated it through her lens, yes. did the legwork for other people, and then created this list that she would share. Um, and this was yep. not a lead magnet, it was to her own email list, but I'm just saying that's another way that you could look at this is you can you can curate the content for people like, you know, like how to mm -hmm. pick a private school for your kid. And then you're going to look at all these articles and then, you know, curate and through your lens of expertise, curate the best ones and give people some direction. Yes. Absolutely. That's All a right. great way to save yourself time and provide values curating. Yeah. So now we have our, you know, we, we have the intention, we've done our research. Now we've, you know, we've created something. Now, what do we do? Well, you want to get it out to people, right? So there's obviously a lot of ways you can do that. Um, I, one way I like to encourage people to start with is the Google grant, Google ad grant, because it's free ads that you can, and you already know that people are searching for it on Google. So you, you put that up uh, as an ad, send people to a page that offers your resource in exchange for their email, whatever it's a quiz or a download or whatever. So right. Google and this grant, is a resource in exchange place to start. for an email. I want to make that clear. You're giving this, yes. and because people know this, they we do this every day. We throw our email down to get the guidebook, right, or whatever. Um, and this is exchange for an email. Like I, I have heard, you know, we've talked about Google grants on this podcast, and I just hear, you know, so many different opinions about if they're effective mm -hmm. or not. But you're going to tell me that they are, and you're going to tell me why they're, they're effective if your attitude and approach is what are people looking for and how can we meet them there? Not people are going to search for a nonprofit to donate to, or people will find me on giving Tuesday. Yeah. Good luck with that. Uh, every other advertiser on Google wants the same thing. And that's just doing a generic giving Tuesday ad. So 
you you need to if you are targeting something specific like um like the spiritual like what spiritual questions are, are people asking that your that re, that client's resource would be a helpful response and result for them you then you can succeed with the google grant because anything that's informational in nature paying advertisers are a lot less likely to want to pay for paying advertisers are more likely to target keywords that are more likely showing an intent of someone to buy something or or you know there's there's more likely to buy or purchase or whatever but if it's just i'm looking for information about this topic i want to know the best like how do i think about which schools to send my kid to or what are the best things to do in my city or solar system facts and the the response i get is a is a guide from a museum that paying advertisers aren't going to go for that but the grant is that therefore the grant is a great way to show up at the top and get someone to download find you and download uh, and get that get that email address and the grant is very successful at doing that it's not so good at like getting donations so it depends on how you use it but that's that's one right. of the best ways to use it I, you know one of the things and i just did a workshop on this and I use this all the time. I have a chart and I talk about like, what is the process by which we enroll donors into our organization? Aware, and I have my four steps are awareness, interest, connection, action. And this is mm -hmm. about awareness. This is about, because they have to know you to like you, like you to love you, love you to invest in you. And this is about just knowing, right? And so if you're looking at people like, no, they get the ad and they're going to give us money. No, that's going way down. <laughs> that's asking somebody to marry them on the first date. You know, that's like, right. we're just we're just out here getting people to know who we are. So keeping that perspective, this is not a money generator. This is just um, you know, getting that base level awareness. Hey, you didn't know who we were, now you know. And if they give your your email, and in in the way that I that this model works is. Once they give your email, now they're in the interest because interest is anything yes. where I can keep connection, right? If a yep. YouTube subscription or, you know, what most people like, and that would be their email. So now you yep. have their email. So now they're in your orbit and now you can start getting to know them, right? And yep. that is, that's the process. So that's how we do that at the top. But what happens is people are, go on social media and they spend a lot of time and energy like you know, stirring stuff up, but it never really drives down into the organization, right? There, there. It's just awareness up this top level. Like, okay, so how can we take people who now they know who we are and see if anybody might be interested in getting to know us better? Um, it. I always parallel this to regular human how we develop relationships, right? Yep. And yep. like, you know, you're like, hi, we just met. Would you like to move in? You know, that's not how, <laughs> but that's how it comes across. Like if you're like, you right. don't know something, well, they didn't give me money. They don't know you. They don't, they don't trust you enough that, but that, but you can build that. So if it's on the top level, that awareness level, and you have that, um, you know, that, that expectation, then, then they can work. So what you're saying is people get disgruntled because they're, they're, they, they wanted to do too much. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I, th I think that I'm, I'm love that you think about the your just real relationships because we all have a sense of what to do in a real relationship. We don't skip steps like that doesn't mean we can't become close with someone in a short amount of time. But you can be sure that if you become close with someone, friends or or, or someone you're dating and you and you get the relationship gets serious, like you can be sure those people didn't skip any steps. If right. it's a real relationship, if it's long, going to be long lasting, like. They didn't just jump from zero to hundred. They took every step along the way, even if those steps may have gone faster than we expected. So I think that's also good news for, for nonprofits too. It's like, it doesn't have to be that, that this awareness stage is going to take then a year for someone to be a donor. Like it can go a lot faster than that, but you've got to take it one step at a time. Right. Right. I get my, this woman taught me like some people are Insta pots and some people are slow cookers, you know, and like, some people will run down that chain really fast and then other people won't. And most people just take some time. And that's what this nurturing the email list is for. And, you know, and that's why for me, it's really important to see this as the top of a process, right? Yeah. And then that it's part of a, a part of a, um, a process that we understand that by which we enroll people in the organization. All right. So I can also, if you want, I can also mention uh, Facebook how to okay. do how to yeah, yeah, yeah. advertise these. So I, just, and we can go into this as much as you want, but Facebook ads um, are, can, can feel like a, a really tricky kind of thing to tackle. 
But there is one type of ad that's really, really effective. It's not super um, difficult to set up. And um, it's very direct to helping people make the decision. Am I, uh, you know, bringing the awareness and, and turning them into the, you know, people in your orbit that are now on the interest stage. And that is what's called a Facebook lead ad. Okay. And a, a Facebook lead ad shows up in someone's feed, whether on Instagram or Facebook and, or Meta, and it offers the, the, the resource to them, like your, your PDF, and it lets them download it without ever leaving the platform. So they just click the button download on your ad. It auto fills their name and their email address that are associated with Facebook. And all they have to do is hit confirm and submit. They never leave their feed. They don't have to go to your website and figure out a new experience. All the tracking gets kept in, and, and, and Facebook uh, you know, has all that data. It doesn't lose it if something's broken on your website. And so Facebook can use the data of those who convert to help you find more people who are likely to convert. So it's it's self-reinforcing and it's it's it gives it removes a lot of the friction from the process of someone clicking on an ad and going off leaving Facebook helps them so it, it, it and it, they don't have to fill any forms in they just click confirm a couple of times so um it's it you could get new subscribers through these ads for a dollar or less each i would say mm. between 80 cents and a dollar 20 each um so it's it can be very affordable you don't need a huge budget for it you're just like hey we need we want to add 400 new subscribers to our list. We've got some marketing budget this month. Let's do that. Okay. So, so that, that's, cause that's sort of my next question is, you know, what, you know, what are the results look like for this? And, and, you know, and then what kind of budget do you need to do something like this? Yeah. So with Google grant, um, obviously the, the ads are, are covered. Um, you might need to bring in some help to have you manage it. Um, if you don't do it yourself, but with the grant, um, I we typically see organizations bring in between fifty and two hundred and fifty new subscribers on a monthly basis. Um, the the orgs that are in the two hundred and fifty three hundred range are have multiple lead magnets. They're offering multiple things, hitting different segments. Um, I've seen some orgs reach two hundred subscribers a month from a single quiz. It's just got to be the right kind of quiz, broad enough. Right. Um, but I would say like a single downloadable thing you could probably usually usually get 100 a month from that and then on facebook like i said um, it kind of depends on what your budget is but between you know just average a dollar each so if you if your budget's 500 then maybe you'll get around four to five hundred new subscribers from that wow that's that's a nice that's a nice bunch of subscribers i mean that that yeah. could really make a difference um and you know, the, the other thing I want to mention is this is sort of like evergreen or is it not like once you get this set up, can it, does it just sort of run or do you have to like change it every one, so often or do you just sort of like let the same content run? That is the beautiful thing about this approach is that it's evergreen. I mean, especially with the Google grant where, or Google search, because people are, the ads are text-based and so it's, it's, and it's the demand is user generated. So the audience is, well, you're limited by the number of people who are searching, but the you're not limited by an audience created by the platform. And so new people are searching for those terms every day. And so your ads are all are just always relevant to those keywords. And so you can basically, once it's working, you do need to, to like manage the ads, but you don't have to change anything about the content or the ad, ad copy. You might want to, to test some things, but the, the content's done. It's It's ready. You can try something, add something new if you want. And then same thing with meta, even with Facebook ads and this lead ad, lead ads, typically with a lot of ads, it, depending on, you, you do want to kind of refresh, refresh and refresh the copy and stuff, but especially because you're more limited to the audience that you created inside Facebook, but at the same time, um, you don't have to refresh it very often. And the content itself doesn't have to be changed. You just, right, the actual you might, thing you create doesn't have to be yeah, changed. It's Maybe very they're supporting evergreen. content or whatever a little bit adjusted. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So all that's, right. It saves tons of effort. So it's it's absolutely worth the investment of time that you put in to create this. Right. And if your intention is to grow your donor base, this is how you start, right? This is yes. this is the top of the chain. All right. This this is what we the I 
we could talk a lot more about this. <laughs> this is wonderful, Chris. This set, thank you for just kind of walking us through step by step how to do this. Uh, and so I also, uh, how do people get in touch with you if they want to learn more about what Beeline does or what you do? Sure. Um, you can uh, reach out uh, to my to me via email team at yourbeeline.com. Go to our website, yourbeeline.com, and we have a, a free guide that you can download how to use digital marketing to find new donors. It's right there on the homepage, and it'll just guide you through that process of, of like, how do we create the content? How do we figure it out? And how do we promote it? Oh my gosh. It's like a book. It's amazing. <laughs> so, so we have the, I'll put the link in the show notes. Um, um, and then any, you can download that guide and it's, it's going to walk you right through this whole process. Yes. All right. This has been amazing. Uh, I really like how we just broke this down and explored this topic because I, again, I do feel like this is the thing that like, this is such a missed opportunity um, mm -hmm. and can really help people bring new energy in at the top of that, you know, pipeline and really expand their base in the way that, you know, we talk about doing all the time. <laughs> all right. Um, my last question is pretty, as always, is um, if I'm in Colorado Springs or, right, you're in Colorado Springs, right? Is that Fort, Fort Collins. Fort, Fort Collins. Okay. I'm on Fort Collins or you're in St. Louis and we go to karaoke. What is your go-to song? Oh man, that, that is such a good question. Um, during the uh, pandemic, our family activity one once a week was karaoke night. Um, <laughs> uh, oh man, I would probably sing, I, I would I always like to sing Such Great Heights by uh, Postal Service. Um, or also, they're also known as Death Cab for Cutie. The oh yeah. Oh. The, the lyrics are, he's, he's, a, he's a great poet. So it's okay. a great song. There you go. So we'll, we're going to sing that. <laughs> when I come Perfect. up. Perfect. Totally. Uh, thank you so much for being here and for sharing all this wisdom. And um everybody go and go to the show notes, um, yourbeeline.com, finding dash donors, and download that guide because it's incredible. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Marianne. It's been all great right. talking to you. You too. And that is the uh this episode of the influential nonprofit. As usual, if you haven't yet, you can go to the influential nonprofit. Dot com and download your up level your influence starter kit which is my lead magnet that we are talking about here but it has all kinds of really cool goodies around how to grow your influence to leverage relationships and build communities of support so if you haven't done that yet go grab that what are you waiting for and that is it for this episode of the influential nonprofit